Highlight Symposium speaker Twyla Bartell is with me now. Thank you for joining me. You're welcome. Thank you for inviting me. Can you give us a little tidbit of some of the significant research you're covering in your talk? Since I'm doing general clinical specialties, it's a wide range, but there is one that interests me um, right off the bat. It's related to pediatric patients. Um, their thyroid cancer patients, and one institution, um, sometimes we give them what's called recombinant TSH before we treat them, so they won't have to um, have their thyroid symptoms, symptoms, you know, really bad before their treatment. Um, usually you give them two doses of this, and you know, if you're injecting a pediatric patient twice on two different days, that might be, you know, a little painful and difficult on them, the patients, the, patient, the parents' work schedule. So they uh, tried doing just one injection and have had really good results. Um, so I think that's going to be something we're going to look at in the future for our pediatric patients. It's always wonderful to enhance patient care, and, right. and especially with children and making right. them feel better. Can you discuss in, in your vast uh, amount of knowledge and, and research technologies and techniques that might be really advancing the field of nuclear medicine? That actually makes me think of another couple of uh, research projects that or abstracts that we received um, that stood out to me. Um, there are a lot of patients that have chronic pain and they go through all of these procedures, all of these treatments, and it doesn't really resolve. Um, there were a couple of institutions that were looking at using our FDG PET CT to exactly localize where that pain is, even down to the nerve level. And um, using that, they've had successful treatment in those patients. So I think that's something that will probably grow in the future. Pain patients where we can't really treat them, it really can't localize them, but now we can, so. And I know you also do a lot of mentoring. What is the key to that? Um, the key to that is just being down to earth, um, try to talk to them at the same level and get them involved, ask what they're interested in, and then try to uh, mentor them and encourage them, direct them in the areas that can help them with their career choices. Um, job opportunities and just what they're interested in. I think it's just being a personal friend to them also. And I know with the new generation, there's technology issues that are different. Oh yes, yes, absolutely. And that reminds me of another research project. Um, there was one, a couple of them that were talking about chat GPT. And you know, I think a lot more people are looking at that or exploring that, using that for their um, teaching their residents and educational purposes. This particular one was comparing um, chat GPT 3.5 and 4, and, found, and it, the results were that 4 was better. So hopefully people will pay attention to that when they're creating their educational programs and um, using that resource. Clearly over the years that you have been in the field, things have changed. As you look ahead, what do you think some of the trends in nuclear medicine might bring us, say, over the next five or 10 years? Well, I think we've already entered that arena right now with theranostics. I think we have a lot more growth in that area, and I still think we have a lot more growth with our PET-CT, different radiopharmaceuticals that are coming up still that need to be approved, um, and some of them are more specific to the disease process. I think that's we're going to have a lot of success in those areas. And that's why really the research is so important. Yeah. Yes, it's important to look at that. I have time. All right, Twyla Bartell, thank you so much. Oh, thank you for having me. I appreciate it.